openness and austerity. But at the end of each yuga, one of those legs of religions or pillars lost. So in this Kali Yuga, we have one pillar left. What is it? Truthfulness. Are you guys getting all the truth you can stand? Turn on the news, you get all you want, right? I don't think so. So truthfulness is being threatened. No one is giving you the truth. Manish is inviting to hear the truth together. You should also do these programs in your home with all your friends. Please bring this truth, especially to your children, especially if they're born of Indian descent. They must know the culture of India, the history of India, the philosophy of India. They must know what it is. Otherwise, what is there? Sense gratification? How's that going? Think about it. You're hungry? Well, you just ate this morning. What's the problem? Why do you have to eat again? Sense gratification would never satisfy you. You have to keep eating continuously until the day you pass away, right? You're, you're, you're forced in a, in a lot of ways, right? To, to, to breathe, you're forced to eat, you're forced to sleep, you're forced to do all these things because you're encased in a body, a gross material body. Prabhupada's first statement was to us as his disciples is you are not the body. That's 24 material elements that will become dust again. That's not you. You may have a very beautiful body. You may have a very strong body. You may have a very intelligent body. You, you, you may have all these different things, right? But guess what? Are you going to be able to hold on to them? Will you lose everything at the end of this, this time period in this life? Can you take your money with you? How about your nice home? Can you take that? Car? You can take your car, right? Can't even take my car? What can you take with you when you leave here? What? Karma. <laughs> karma. Yes. You can take your karma with you. That's very wonderful. Yes, you take your karma with you like air carries aroma in the subtle body of false ego. Okay, mind and intelligence. These are subtle things, right? We can see the result of intelligence, but we don't see intelligence, right? We can see the result of false ego. <laughs> I promise you, you can see that everywhere you look, right? In other words, I am God. I'm the most beautiful. I'm the most wealthy. I'm the most powerful. I'm the most famous. Everyone in the material world is trying to take that position, knock someone off the top of the hill and take that position. This is what they're doing with all these wars. If you look at the history of this world, all it is is conflict. One man says, oh, you have my property. So he comes to take your property. And another guy goes, no, I think I'll take that property. He comes to take that. Was it your property in the first place? No. <laughs> Whose property is it? It belongs to God. It was here before you got here. God has created all this for you to go try to be happy in the material world. We have left the spiritual sky of such an Ananda Vigraha and instead we come here to suffer birth old age disease and death are you liking that guys raise your hand if, if you love that you love all oh no don't raise your hand <laughs> somebody's raising the hand I love birth no. death old age and disease no, no no you don't love it you don't love birth death old age and disease you want to live a such an Ananda Vigraha life you want to live forever you don't want to be separated. You don't want your grandparents to grow old and become sick. You want to keep them. You love them. You don't want to lose them, right? No. right? We don't want to be separated. Yoga means not to be separated. It means to be yoked, cloaked, if you will, marinated in love of God. Wow, what a concept. Marinated in the love of God. You need to try that out. Because I can promise you, it'll bring you a lot greater happiness than what you're striving for in the material world that you're bound to lose. And you can take that with you back to the spiritual world. Because that's a karma. That's no karma. Not good karma, sad karma, beat karma. It's, it's not bad karma. It's not good karma to suffer and joy to take another body in the material world. But instead, what it is is no karma. And that means you have a spiritual body 
then becomes uh, realized, and you are then living in your Swarup city, Swarup city, your perfected body. That body will not grow up. That body will not get diseased. That body will not die. That body will live forever in the association of those whom you love and in the association of Supreme Beloved, which is Krishna. So what does Krishna mean? The most beautiful, the most wealthy, the most wise, the most powerful, the most famous, yet the most renounced. Not conceited. <laughs> you see a rich man in the world, he's normally pretty conceited. Right? He's like, well, I got a big bank account. <laughs> so he's thinking that's his security. But that's, that bank account will soon belong to others because that body will grow old, diseased, and die. So please do not take shelter in your nation because this nation ain't going to save you at the time of death. Not any army, not any country, not anybody. The only person that can actually save you truly is the guru, is the spiritual master. The spiritual master can save you eternally from this repeated cycle of samsara, the wheel of birth and death that we're all being ground up underneath, right? A wheel is rolling over us all the time. So the spiritual master can do that. Tadvidi prani pratena pari prashnena sevya upadek shanti tegyanam gyaninas tatvadarshinaha. Approach a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively, right? The spiritual master has seen the truth. Therefore, he can impart it to you. So render him a little service. Offer him some service. What's he doing? The welfare of all. He's doing, for the welfare of all, the spiritual master's life exists. He no longer has a personal selfish motive. His motive is the same motive as God. Just like you read uh, in the Bible, Jesus Christ said, My father and I are one. Uh, we're one in the same purpose. So yoga means to yoke yourself with the will of God and become a walking servant of God in the world. Benefit everyone you come in contact with. The Vaishnavas are called touchstones. You know what a touchstone is? Whatever you touch to it turns to go. Or desire trees. Whatever you ask the tree to produce, it immediately gives you. Kalpa Vriksha. Okay? So become that personality. Really benefit the world. You don't have to give up your job. <laughs> You don't have to give up your house. You don't have to give up anything. You just give your house to God. Okay, it's not yours anyway. Even your own karma is being rewarded by God. It says, Krishna says, uh, all of them as they surrender to me, I reward accordingly. So we can act independently, right? We can act independently. Like if you have a son or a daughter and they decide, no, I don't want to do like my parent. I don't want to listen to my parent. I'm going to go out and do all nonsense, and they end up in jail. Right? That's basically our situation. We've not listened. We've left the spiritual sky. We're in the material world doing all kinds of things that we think is vitally important. We think all this stuff is uh, vitally important. But the only vital importance is because you may die today. You may not make it through the night. Is there any guarantee? Does anybody have a written warranty or guarantee? Can you share that with me? Yeah. Did somebody issue you a warranty when you got your body and said, no, you won't die? No. So, one who has taken their birth, death is certain. Just like the Vedic religion is called Sanatana Dharma. It never took its birth. But all these other religions are created at a certain time. And they're forgotten along the way. Or you could create your own religion today. We call it Manish something. <laughs> you know and it might last a little while. You may have a few people interested. Right? But then it will fade into obscurity. So Sanatana Dharma means the original knowledge of the Vedic text that is recorded by the incarnation of God, Vyasadeva, right? Written down for your benefit, unchanged for thousands of years, been translated, read it, and guess what? The light bulb comes on. <laughs> when you read it, all of a sudden the light bulb comes on. 
and a big smile crosses your face. Why? Because two things. First of all, you realize that you are an immortal soul that you can never die. You also realize that you're in charge of your fate. You can create your future. You can create your fate today by the activities you perform today. So by the way, the activity, this activity will make you a sinless person. It will erase the sins of your life. And we've all sinned, all of us. We've all deviated and fallen short. And that's why we have this death. So, so the point is, is that you can take control of your life today. And the way to do that is to physically, mentally, spiritually give everything back to God. It's His anyway. Just give it back. Will He take it all and there won't be any left? Let me ask you a question. You made, you offered, offered the prashad tonight, right? Did God eat it all? There weren't none for us? We have none left, right? No, there's... God tastes... But he's so kind, he leaves the prashad there for you to take. Now, it'd be pretty cool if he did eat it all. You know? <laughs> then you know you actually made some spiritual advancement. <laughs> yeah. There's a story in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita about that. You know? and we won't go into that today. But there's a lot of great stories that you can understand. So this Vedic culture is your heritage. But guess what? It's not only yours. It's not Indian. It's not Hindu. It's eternal truth that's meant for all souls everywhere all over the world all the time and when you read it and you study it and you hear it you become happy right when you chant Hare Krishna you become sinless right and as long as you create sin means karma it doesn't matter if it's good karma it's still sinful you may think, oh, this guy's a great guy. He's giving charity. You know, he's, he's, he's got a lot of money. He's a great guy, right? Not committing sin. He's, he's in mode of goodness, right? Well, the mode of goodness is nice because it will lead you to the pseudosadva or pure goodness, which is transcendental to the material world. But even goodness in the material world will only elevate you up to Brahma Loka in the demigods. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka, Loko Yam Karma Bandana, Dadartam Karma Kontaya, Mukta Sangha Samachara. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka, from the highest planet down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. You want to sign up for that today? We get you signed up. That's not what you want to sign up for. You want to sign up for an eternal life of ecstasy, happiness, beauty, bliss. All the things you dream of in your heart and soul. They don't exist in a material world. Sorry. I wish they did. I mean, they're here. There's an illusion of it. It's, it's kind of like a shadow of the spiritual world. Right? It's, it's a replica of the spiritual sky. It's a replica of the spiritual sky. Right? Right? We have relationships, the five rasas we got, right? Parental, neutral, you know, uh, friendship, par more like that, parental, all that. It's here, right? We see these relationships, but in perfection, they're associated with God. So Prabhupada used to always talk about Krishna consciousness. As a matter of fact, he called it the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And when you stop and think about that a minute, to be conscious of Krishna or God at every moment, to be conscious of God at every moment is the charge, is the purpose of human life. Right? Now, you guys are married, right? You love each other. You've been around a long time together. You've got beautiful family, beautiful children. You love each other. <clears throat> so what you want to do is take that, that house that you have, that love that you have, the family that you have, and you want to give it all back to God. That's a conscious effort on your part. And you want to be conscious all the time that, that God has provided all these things for you, right? Now, does God take it all away and you have no place to sleep now? No. You still have a nice place to sleep, right? So what's the problem? 
You give it back to God, you become sinless. If you keep it all for yourself and you try to hoard it till the time of death, are they going to put a, a U-Haul trailer chained to your, to your tombstone? <laughs> and by the way, you get no merit. When you try to hold on to it, grasping for that last breath, you're going to keep that money, you're going to keep... You get no merit. You get karma. And your next birth, you will suffer or enjoy the fruits of that action. So, give some in charity. Give some in charity to the Brahmins. The Brahmins will use it for the benefit of society. They will use it for all of society. And they'll benefit everyone. Are they keeping it for themselves? Are they building a big house with your donation? No. They build God a big house. And then they invite the whole world to come in. And everybody can see God on the altar. They can bow down. They can become meritorious. They become purified. Right? They can fall in love with God. Think about that a minute. Falling in love. Now, falling in love is one of the most fun things you can do. Right? We all, has anybody ever fell in love? Raise your hand and fell in love. Nobody in here has ever fallen in love. Okay. You, okay. <laughs> All right. Falling in love is a, it's, it's, it's the most amazing feeling, isn't it? Remember that newness? Yeah. That love that you had when you found that person, you, you felt that, that feeling, right? It's the happiest, most, you know what they say on your marriage day, that's the happiest day of your life. And divorce is the worst day of your whole life. So why is there divorce in the material world? Because everyone has independent desires, right? And they conflict after a while. So if we're not willing to, to uh, work and shape and bend and work together, we won't stay together. So the big problem is, is if our motivations are selfish, sense gratificatory acts, right? Then anybody that gets in the way is your enemy, even your own family. So that's why we say give it all back to God. Realize you're not the proprietor. You didn't create it. Right? It was here before you got here. Your parents didn't create it. All right? Their parents didn't create it. And their parents before them didn't create it. You go back thousands and billions of, of lives and you'll see that none of those people are the Purusha. But Krishna is called Purushottama. He's called a Bhagavan. Right? Rishikesh. He's got all these wonderful names. Even in Christianity, Jehovah, the most powerful. He's got all these names. So we give it back to the source of it, and that's all you got to do. Now, you got kids, right? Everybody, somebody's got kids, right? Say, all oh, your children. You're giving them an allotment. Here's an allowance, right? And you take this. And the kid goes and buys you something with it and brings it to you out of love for you. Is that the happiest day of your life? It is. That's the happiest day of your life. You want to know what the happiest day of Krishna's life is? It's when you do the same thing for him. Every word that we've spoken here today is all about liberating the soul back to the Satchitananda Vigraha, back to the Sanatana Dharma, back to where you need to be to really feel that love that you're looking for in the material world. Right? So every word that we're doing here is transcendental. This is not a material activity. We're actually in a state of transcendence right now. Because we're not engaged in a material activity that produces karmic retribution. We're engaged in a karma-free activity. And by the way, Krishna says, in this, in this activity, there's no loss and no diminution at any time. But in the material world, every act you do, everything that you think is important, how many of us have a list of stuff to do today, right? Right? We think all oh, that's so important. At the top of your list, I want you to write, become, fall in love with God. Write it on there, fall in love with God. That's the most important thing that you can do with your time and your energy. Right? And if you do that, at the time of death, Krishna says, whatever you think of at the time of death, that you shall attain without fail. 
So if you love repeated birth and death and suffering in the material world, you can stay here as long as you want. Kala is eternal. Karma is not. So decide what to do with your activities. And look on that list and see, how can I dedicate all of this to Krishna somehow? How can I dedicate that? You know, we just finished a series. We're, on the, we're going on the 16th chapter next. And on Monday nights, you can join us if you want to. We have a 7 o'clock Bhagavad Gita class. And we're, on the, we're getting ready to get on the 16th chapter right now. But the interesting thing is Krishna talks about in the opulence of the absolute chapter of the universal form. Krishna's given you hundreds of ways to remember him. Right? Has anybody drank water today? Raise your hand if you drank water. Okay, there's your chance to be Krishna conscious. Krishna says, I am the taste of water. Has anybody enjoyed the light of the sun today? Raise your hand if you enjoyed the light of the sun. There's not much sun out. <laughs> Wish there was more. But the light of the sun is the eye of God. Every activity you're doing is being witnessed by the moon and the sun. Everything you do is being recorded. Think about it. Can you do what you're doing for God? If you can do it, do it. If you can't do it for God, don't do it. Don't do it. Is that simple? That's simple. Now, the Vedic literature is massive, right? Has anybody ever read the Mahabharata? What a book, right? I mean, it's enormous, right? Anybody read the Ramayana? Read your, raise your hand if you read the Ramayana. Okay, you got to read the Ramayana, guys. Come on now. Okay. The Ramayana is about Lord Ramchandra. Yeah, Ramchandra, man. Come on. Ram and Sita, I can't quit crying when I'm reading that. I can't quit. I'm like, oh, God, Sita, oh, God. Save her, Ram. So get involved with God. Get involved every day with Krishna. Make everything you do connected to Krishna somehow. Become Krishna conscious. Chant Hare Krishna. Chant it. Right? Because by chanting it, you'll be conscious of God. So, all right, guys. Well, listen, I, I could do this for days, and, <laughs> and I don't want to overdo you, right? I have no idea what time it is. What we're, oh, there it is. Wow, it's 8 o'clock, right? <laughs> That's not right, is it? What time is it, y'all? Okay, so let me stop here and ask if there are any questions that anybody would like or any comments that anybody would like to make based on the topic that we discussed today. Anybody? So you, uh, do, you, do you visit church? Do I visit church? I visit every church everywhere all the time as much as possible. So sometimes, is there a conflict between uh, the opinion? There's no and conflict at all uh, between God and God. There's conflicts between us and God a lot of times because we change the message. So, yes, you should, Prabhupada once said that whatever church you go to, you should see God in that church. In, in your own heart, you should worship the Lord in that way. Because everybody that goes to church every day, or, or not every day, they go twice, wait, they go once on Sunday, right? They go once on Wednesday night. Yeah. That was different. When I went to India, I started seeing everybody going to the church all the time. I was like, really? They go to church every day? And several times a day sometimes. They go get Charnamrita, right? A little Prasad. <laughs> they go bow to the deities. Right? Here, we have what's called C and E Christians. You know what that is? Christmas and Easter. That's when they go. C and E. Maybe twice a year. Christmas Sometimes Christmas. once a week. Right? Now, Christ Jesus is a pure devotee of the Lord. Christ Jesus is considered to be Shaktivesh, avatar. Okay? Because he lived the perfect life that Krishna, he's Krishna's son. He's non-different in his mood and his attitude and in what he taught as Krishna. That's why they killed him. Right? He came to give you love, right? And so we can't have that. We got to kill him. But the priest at the church felt threatened. Their power over people was threatened. We see this throughout the life of Luther. We see this in the Catholic Church. We see this all over the place where they would just go kill people because you were a threat to the church. Right? I mean, this has happened throughout all history. So, no, I don't agree with any of that. But if I go to the church, I go there to bring God's names. And I go there to sing God and to share that love. 
because everybody is equal in God's eyes. They may be misdirected slightly. That's possible. Right? I know I was before I met Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And then I read all the Vedic literature that I could get my hands on, and now guess what? I'm a happy man. It could be rainy, we could lose, we could gain, we could do whatever we want to do, but we're happy because we know that we're mortal souls and that we have a choice in our future karma or no karma. We have that choice. So today you've made a choice to come here to Manish to listen to Gayatri Das, right? Talk about these Vedic literatures. And so that is a good choice. And we'd like to invite you on Monday night to come to the Bhagavad Gita class. And that would be a good choice. Okay? Because to hear the words that are coming out of the mouth of God, Bhagavan Uvacha, God said, wouldn't you like to know what he had to say? How cool would that be? Because <laughs> I never heard any words out of the mouth of God when I was growing up. I, I, I knew there was a burning bush, you know, and there were these tablets. Don't don't kill. It's only stealing. You know, I knew that. But the Bhagavad Gita was spoken to Arjuna, who was a pure devotee of God. Perfect nobility. Perfect example of a human being. God didn't have to start and say, oh, by the way, Arjuna, try not to molest another man's wife, please. He didn't say that. He didn't say, don't steal, don't kill, don't. Those Ten Commandments are there for criminals to be reformed. Arjuna was not a criminal. He was a Rajarishi, kingly saint. Right? So that's who we want to hear from. We want to hear from the, the best, highest source of information we can get. And that comes to you through the Sampradaya, unbroken, given to you by a qualified guru, who can impart knowledge to you because he has then seen the truth. So Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada was so kind to translate these wonderful Vedic literatures, the Puranas, the Srimad Bhagavatam, right? <clears throat> Bhagavad Gita. And it has changed our lives. There are millions of people all over the world. Look at this temple that's being built. See this temple? The world's largest temple. Why is it being built in India? In Mayapur. Man, when I went to Mayapur, there was nothing there except for just glades, you know, and grass for as far as you could see. Now there's a whole city. Now there's a gigantic temple. It's called Temple of Understanding. It teaches the astrological calculations. All the science that the Vedas are. It's not blind faith. I was asked to not question the Lord. That it was, a, it was, I was, I would be simple if I questioned the Lord. But what did Arjuna do? The first thing he did was question the Lord. <laughs> Is Arjuna simple? No, he's pure devotee. What was his question? He said, I cannot make this grief go away. It's drying up my senses and my bow gun diva is slipping from my hand. Krishna, I shall not fight. He didn't want to kill his relatives. Would you? No, because we're bodily connected. We're attached to one another like that. But there was a higher purpose. The higher purpose was what? Parichanaya uh, sadunam. Menashaya chadustritam. Dharma samsta pranartaya. Sambhava me. You get it, you get it. So Krishna says, whenever and wherever there's a decline in religious principles, and an increase in irreligiosity. At that time, I just send myself to what for? To reestablish the sadhunam, the devotees of the Lord, the sadhus, and to annihilate the miscreants. So that's why Krishna comes again and again, like that, right? Yada yada hi dharma shad lanar bhavati bharatar butanam hi dharma shad tadatmanam shijan. So Krishna is coming again and again and again and again. In every universe, and there are trillions and unlimited numbers of universes, right? And so Krishna is performing all this for your benefit, for my benefit, for this little boy 
who was born in Old Hickory, Tennessee. I was just telling them where I was born, not far from here. That's where I was born. I left here. I went all over the world. I thought, I don't ever want to come back here again. <laughs> right? But now everywhere is the spiritual world for me. I don't care if it's here, there, there, where, wherever you want to go. Because Krishna's there in everything I see now. Because my eyes have been opened with a torchlight of knowledge. Right? Om Jnana Timurandasya Yunanjana Salakai Chakshuru Militandina Tasmai Sri Guru Maha. Because my guru came, brought me this information, and turned on the light bulb. And I had so many questions that had remained unanswered, but they're found in your great Vedic scriptures. And if anybody ever wants to talk about this, or you have any questions, anything you need, any programs you want, all we're dedicated to come and doing that for you. Okay? That's what we're here to do. So, uh, uh, Prabhupada asked his disciples particularly to take this message to as many people as possible. So we're always looking for opportunities to spread this wonderful absolute truth called Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma, the eternal function of every soul. It's not something you convert to. I'm not a Hindu. I'm not a Hindu. You're not a Hindu. Hindu is a word that was created by invaders to India about 1,600 years ago. There was no such thing as Hindu. There was no such thing as India, Bart Varsa. And who is Bart? The great saintly Rajarishi. Study his life for a minute. You find out who he is, and you'll become a pure devotee. You'll become a pure devotee. And by the way, these great saintly kings of India, you know what they did? They had treasuries untold. Right? Like that uh, temple in South India. <clears throat> That's where Vaishnavism started, actually, South India. Moved to North India. But the thing about it is, what's that Pursotama temple, right? Where the Lord is golden and he's on that bed, right? Serving ser ser bed. It's all solid gold, right? And you look in that room, it looks like the treasures of the lost ark or something. You know, all these movies they're making out. That's India. That's the India I love. Okay? And that treasure was donated to the temple. And the temple became the main treasury. They didn't have big banks. What's the biggest building in the city now? A bank. We worship money. It used to be the biggest building in the temple. was the temple. That was the biggest building. was the temple. Not the bank. Right? So in that temple, all untold wealth in the bottom of that temple, beautiful skyscraper temple. You've seen it? massive beautiful thing and there's two doors that they can't even open because they have to have mantra open those doors and they say that there's billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of wealth in those. as a matter of fact the treasury of India is founded on that temple I don't know if you knew that part of it anyway so anyway guys I'm having a fun time and I can go for hours but uh, you know I, I don't want to burn you out I'll be happy to come again you know anytime you want but this is what we do, okay? When we accepted Srila Prabhupada as our guru, we wanted to take that very seriously. So whatever he said to do, we tried to follow it. So he gave us things to do that we had to, we had to do. We had to follow four regular principles. No illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling, no meat eating. Chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna a day. It's 27,000 names of God a day. And then go out all day and try to spread this information from Bhagavad Gita. So you're welcome to join us. <laughs> we need your help. And if you can't join us, I was going to go through this whole thing in the Bhagavad Gita with you today from this chapter called Devotional Service. It's the 12th chapter. Beautiful chapter. Krishna says, <clears throat> dedicate everything, just like I told you a minute ago. Dedicate everything you have to me. I'll, I'll, I'll read this because it's very important. Just a little taste of it anyway for you. So, uh, here you go. Okay. Krishna says, but for those who worship me, giving up all their activities and to me and being devoted me, to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service and always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Prita, for them I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. Now, how much money does it cost for you to concentrate for a moment on God? Can anybody do it? Can a child do it? Can anybody show a picture of Krishna to a child? Anybody can do it anywhere. 
Fix your mind on the Lord, right? Why? Manmana Baba Mad Bhakto, Majaji Nam Namaskaru. That means worship me, become my devotee, always think of me. Surely you will come to me. Why do we want to go to Krishna? If you started out in the material world looking for a partner who is the most beautiful, didn't you? Think about it. Boys are always looking for the most beautiful girl, right? Girls are always looking for the most handsome man. Let's be honest. That's what are we looking for? A wealthy man. Or what? A wealthy, wealthy man. <laughs> a wealthy man. A wealthy man or a powerful man or this or that. Well, God has all those attributes in full of which no one can be equal to nor greater than. So why not fall in love with God? By the way, God created your partner. So if you think your partner's pretty cool, <laughs> then you think God's pretty cool. Right? So I've tried to just bring this down, you know, from all this lofty philosophy just to give you the facts. Right? The facts are you're living in a material world of birth and death, old age and disease. You're on a razor's edge. Anything could happen. On the way over here, we had somebody try to run over us, right? Every time I get in the car, somebody's trying to kill me. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, they're all in a big hurry. Where are they going? <laughs> Boy, they must have some good sense gratification on the other end of that, of that trip. Because I had never seen anybody as passionate to get somewhere as these people. You're going 90 miles an hour. And what are they going to go do? Engage in some type of illicit behavior that they think is the best thing that ever happened. And all it's doing is digging them deeper and a deeper and deeper home. Right? Of karmic retribution. Matter of fact, you have to be very, very careful not to fall down into the lower modes of ignorance. Ignorance, passion, goodness, pure goodness. Because then you fall down into the hellish world. We don't want to do that. So if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, there's descriptions of all these things. And you can do that. So Krishna says, just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Person of Godhead. Engage all your intelligence in me. Thus you will live with me, live in me always, without a doubt. So that's the message I have for you today. And if you look at the Srimad Bhagavatam, it starts out. The first thing is, um, the very first, uh, well, it's in the third chapter, actually. Let's see. Oh, I, I read this earlier and you missed it, so I'll do this one first. And then I'll, I'll tell you what I was going to say. This one is, Oh, my Lord, persons who chant the holy names of your Lordship are far, far advanced in spiritual life. Even if born in families of malechas, chavanas, yavanas, dog eaters, they can be elevated to the platform of pure goodness. Such chanters have undoubtedly performed all kinds of austerities and sacrifice, bathed in all the sacred places, and finished all scriptural studies. So, you guys are chanting Hare Krishna. I'd say that you're in an excellent condition uh, right now. Okay? Because you've understood why to do that. All right? So, and also, this, I love this verse. A karma sarva karma va, moksha kama adharadi. Divrena bhakti jogena yajita purusampara. And that means whether you have all material desires and you want to become the most wealthy, beautiful, famous, powerful, whatever it is you want. You want the biggest house, you want the most money. So if you have that, if you have that desire in the material world, or if you have no desires in the material world, you're free from lust, envy, greed, and you've given it up, you've had enough done. Or if you're free from all material desires, or if you desire liberation from all this pain and suffering, a person uh, who has broader intelligence must by all means worship the supreme truth, the supreme personality of God. So we go to God for everything. Doesn't even matter what it is. We're going to go to to the Lord for everything. So the one I was going to read you, and I'm going to finish with this, unless there's any other questions. This is uh, the second verse, in, literally, or second chapter in the Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam. It says, The supreme occupation, or dharma, for all humanity, is that by which men can attain to the loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted, 
in order to completely satisfy the self. So this was written down by Vyasadeva 5,000 years ago, and it's just as pertinent today as it was 5,000 years ago. And it'll be just as pertinent 5,000 years ago. So if you want to be happy, in the Bible it says, Seek the kingdom of God first, then all things shall be added unto you. Don't try to get all things added and then figure all oh, at the last minute, I'll go figure it out. <laughs> this is the mindset of a cheater. Right? Oh, I'll cheat God. Okay? So I can do all nonsense and then at the last minute I'll think of God and I'll go back to God. <laughs> right? It's not how it works. They say your life flashes before you, so everything you've done is a collective whole. That is the image you will remember. So become attached to God. Offer all your food to God, call on God's name, and uh, be conscious of God in all things. And join us for the Bhagavad Gita class on Monday night at 7 o'clock. And if you leave your email with Ron Bhatti, <clears throat> Devi Dasi, she will be happy to put you on the list and send you the link. And if you want to join us, we'd love to have you. It's a beautiful thing. We're having fun. Okay? And we're just about to finish the Bhagavad Gita. Now we're going into Srimad Bhagavatam next. And... We'll, we'll remind you of all the activities that the devotees are doing in town, the kirtans that are going to happen in town. Come and join us. You'd be really surprised how many people come just from all walks of life. Would you believe it? Yeah. So just fill that out over there for Raghavati if you want to. She's, she's our coordinator. She's our social media guru. So, all right, guys. Well, listen, I, I love you, and I appreciate you, and I thank you, and I, I'm grateful for your association, Manish. Thanks for the invitation. I really appreciate you and your wife and beautiful family and home and everything you got here. And your parents. Yeah. That's so cool right there. That's, uh, that's cool. So, uh, is there any other comments or any other questions? Or, Manish, is there anything else you, you wish of me? You want to do one more little kirtan? Yeah, yeah. We would, uh, if you can do... Some kirtan and then we will offer some flowers some, to the. Okay. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll do that.